Hey guys, today I'll be doing a tune-up, adjusting the intake valve and the exhaust valve on the Cummins ISL9 CM2150. First thing you need to do is remove the crankcase pressure sensor harness and disconnect that. Now, during most tune-up processes, the service manual requires you to remove the four ports on the intake manifold. And the reason behind this is at times there's soot that normally builds up in these ports that will cause a EGR code. So make it a regular habit to remove these and blow air through them. There's normally four ports on the ISL 9s. There's two on the front, there's one on the rear, and one right behind this air transfer tube. If you look closely, you can see the one behind the intake manifold which is right behind the EGR pressure sensor. All right, so on some applications, particularly buses, on the new flyers, it has this bracket, but I know on some Gillicks, it's pretty much a straight shot. You ain't gotta take nothing off or anything of that nature. Um, in order to remove this bracket, you gotta take the nuts off of this U-bolt clamp, then the two bolts down there that's holding it, and that fuel line. Normally on the fuel line, all I really ever have to do is just take the banjo bolt out, just pull the pull the fuel line out just a little bit, and the bracket will actually slide past it. So all right, we got the bracket off. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and take the crankcase housing off, and those are held in by six 10 millimeter bolts. Pull the pressure tube out for the crankcase breather. And then also, there's another one right there. Be careful not to break that. Uh, sometimes they're brittle, and what tends to happen is they start to crack around the actual tube itself, and then you'd have to start replacing the crankcase breather tube as well. All right, so during the removal of the crankcase housing, I actually noticed a lot of oil on the side by the actual fuel lines. And when I removed it, I actually noticed that somebody has actually already broken the tube. So looks like we're replacing the tube as well. All right, so next thing to do is take all the bolts out of the valve cover and we'll pull the valve cover off. It's about eight or 10 bolts. So let's get started. All right, guys. So once the valve cover's off, uh, this is what you should see. Uh, you got your injector harness, uh, your exhaust rocker, your intake rocker, your adjustment screw, and your adjustment screw lock nut. Uh, I like to double check, make sure nothing fell off, nothing's laying in the, the rocker box. Uh, make sure your bridges are all there for both sides. And uh, yeah, we'll go around, uh, take the cam cover off so we can put this engine at top dead center and go ahead and start making adjustments to your latch. All right, all right so what I have here is a service manual printout for the ISL9 CM2150. Uh, as you see, you have the last limits for the intake and the last limits for the exhaust. These numbers are what the minimum is and the max is on both sides. On the other sheet of paper, we have the actual reset limits, which are only required on the interval, which is what we're doing, which is a PM. Uh, Manufacturer recommends the intake to be at 12 thousandths and the exhaust to be at 22 thousandths. So the first adjustments we want to do is set the engine at the top dead center. And we want to check uh, cylinder one intake, cylinder one exhaust, cylinder two intake, cylinder three exhaust, cylinder four intake, and cylinder five exhaust. All right. All right, guys, welcome back. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and 
and took our uh, valve lash on the exhaust and the intake side. So uh, first what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my 22 thousandths of an inch filler gauge for my exhaust and put it in between the rocker itself and the bridge. All right, so what I'd like to do is uh, go have an up and down movement once you got the fuel gauge in between the bridge and the rocker itself and just go up and down uh, if there's no movement up and down then it's perfect uh, you don't want any type of uh, up and down movement a lot of lash or anything of that nature but if there is a lot of lash then you need to go ahead and make the adjustment some people like to check to see if it has a little drag and again it has a little drag so that's okay too uh, however you want to do it it works both ways all right so now we move on to the intake side on uh, cylinder four and same thing that we did on cylinder five exhaust uh, check for up and down movement if there's no up and down movement you're good to go um, check to see if there's any drag and this one has a lot of drag so is with inspect, so we're good to go on that as well. Uh, so do the same thing for all six, and uh, once you're finished with the top dead center, then you want to do a 360 uh, timing mark on the cam at the bottom, and then you want to check cylinder six intake, uh, cylinder six exhaust, uh, cylinder five intake, cylinder four exhaust, cylinder three intake and cylinder two exhaust and that would be it all right hang tight be right back all right so we're back uh went ahead turned the engine over so now we're a little we're 360 or tiny marks now at the bottom so now we're going to check cylinder six exhaust and cylinder six intake uh, this would probably be a lot easier to see compared to the cylinder five. So got my 22 thousandths for the exhaust housing. And like I said, just lift the rocker up a little bit, slide it underneath between the bridge and the rocker itself. And just go up and down. If you ain't got a lot of play going up and down, then it's good. Or a little bit of slight drag, it's perfect. And do the same thing with the intake side. Just move it out the way. And again, up and down. No play at all. Slight drag when you go back and forth. Now, if you do happen to have to make an adjustment on any of the rockers, so far I went ahead and checked everything and I have no adjustments needed on this cylinder head. Uh, you will go ahead and back one of these nuts off. And what I normally like to do is put a feeler gauge in between the rocker, like so, and then back this adjustment nut off and then adjust this all the way down. So tighten the rocker all the way down until you can't move the actual feeler gauge out and then back it off just a little bit until you get a little bit of movement and then tighten the nut down and that's that's it you wouldn't have to do nothing else uh pretty straightforward uh but like i said on this cylinder head on this pm no none of them actually needed adjusting so we're good to go but other than that like i said do the same thing for the rest of them uh and i uh, will be right back all right guys, so we already finished the adjustments on the lash for both sides of the intake and exhaust. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and replace the crankcase filter. Uh, you're already there, might as well go ahead and do it. Just make it a good habit, especially if it's never been changed before. It's just something, something good to practice. It's not hard, it takes a eight millimeter socket and that's about it.
All right, so once you get the cover off, go ahead and put the filter in and then put the cover back on. All right, guys. So before we finish up, uh, back to those ports that I was talking about earlier. Uh, took all the island heads out. So what you want to do is take an air nozzle, you know, one with a rubber tip and just put it in the holes. Uh, what this does is clean all the soot out of, of the intake manifold that could possibly block uh, the delta pressure sensor. And what normally would happen is throw a tech engine light. And since we're already here, might as well go ahead and clean those holes out and just make life simpler. So doing that, Don't forget about this port. A lot of people have forgotten it. Uh, I've seen a lot of people you know, have a check engine light after cleaning the three ports and forget about this one. Uh, so definitely don't forget about this port. Uh, just make sure you get it in there. about this port, the one right above the actual intake itself. Alright, and once that's done, you can start putting everything back together. And, uh, yeah. Alright guys, thanks for joining in. Uh, got everything back together. Uh, hope this video was helpful. And if so, hit the like button. And subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next one.